Hey everyone, it's Brian with Arduino Academy and creator of CircuitCrush.com, and I'm excited to be here with you on your journey to becoming the maker you were born to be. Now that we've started getting into some coding, we have to have a little talk before we go any further. We need to talk about something called variable scope, or just scope for short. No, I'm not talking about the stuff you rinse your mouth out with, or you use to look at germs with. Scope in a world of programming refers to where in a program a variable can be used. It refers to the parts of a program or code block that can use a certain variable. Now this may sound a little weird and confusing, but don't worry, we're going to clear that up and it's actually pretty easy to understand. We also need to say a few words on using variables instead of using what are called literals or hard-coded numbers, which is good programming practice. And to see what I mean for both topics, I've pulled up the blink example that comes packaged with the Arduino's IDE. I'm using this simple example because it's very basic. And since we don't know a ton about programming yet, this basic sketch should be easy to understand for us at this point. And though it's short, it'll serve as an example to demonstrate the concept of variable scope and good programming practice when it comes to using literals or hard-coded numbers in your sketches. So let's take a look. First, as is good practice, we see the sketch starts with a group of comments that describe the program and give us some vital info on it. Now, I'm going to be honest and tell you that in the interest of not being boring, you may not see me do this in every sketch from every lesson in the future. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it when you're doing your own sketches and projects. For example, we can see from the comments that this sketch uses the Arduino's built-in LED and tells us the LED's pin number is 13. And we'll need to know this information to get this to work. It's also good to note that this example requires no external components because it uses the LED and series resistor that are built into the board. But for our purpose, we're going to make a few simple modifications to the program in a minute. The next thing to note is a setup function. We see we're using the pin mode function here, but we also see LED built in which is kind of weird. This along with other words like high, low, input, output, and more are called constants. Constants are predefined expressions in the Arduino language which are used to make programs easier to read. They appear in blue and are often, though not always, typed in all capitals. And you know, this is all fine and legit for this sketch. I mean, using LED built in totally works and there's nothing technically wrong with it. But for our purposes, we're going to make a small change. After the comment block at the top, but before the setup function, we're going to declare a byte called LED pin and assign the value 13 to it. Now, there's a few things to note about what I just said and what I'm doing. First, I'm using the byte data type because we're declaring a pin number. And since 13 is a lot less than 255, and the pin number isn't going to change during program execution, we can use a byte instead of an integer and save some space. Next, notice that I said I'm assigning the value 13 to the variable LED pin. I didn't say I was setting LED pin equal to 13. And there's an important distinction that we talked about in our lesson on arithmetic and logic. So if you skip that lesson or need a review, please go back and watch it again. Finally, notice that I gave the variable a descriptive name that says something about what it's for. It would be clear, even to a complete beginner, that this variable has something to do with a pin the LED will be connected to. So now that we have our variable declared, let's replace the LED built-in constant with the variable name. So here we can see the name LED pin refers to the variable we declared, which refers to the number 13. So pin mode in digital write will see the number 13. And doing this brings us to our next important point. I could have just put the number 13 there. And some of you may be wondering why I went through the trouble of declaring a variable for a pin number instead of just hard coding the number 13. And this is because hard coding numbers or using literals is usually a bad idea. Why is this a bad idea, you ask? Let's say you decide to change the pin number in the future because you don't want to use a built-in LED for some reason, and you've wired up your own LED circuit. 
you would have to sift through the code and find every line that refers to the PIN number and change it. Now, you may be thinking something like, well, so what? We only have a few lines of code here. That's going to be easy. And you know what? For short programs like this, you're right. But now imagine you have a sketch with like, I don't know, 530 lines of code or something. It's easy to see how doing this could be unwieldy and error prone. Rather, it would be much easier to change the pin number in one place near the beginning of the program. So that's a reason why it's usually a bad idea to hard code numbers, and we want to develop good programming habits early in the game. But wait a minute. We still have a literal or hard coded number, a thousand in the delay function. Well, let's apply the same thinking and create a variable for that in case we ever want to change the delay time, which controls the speed the LED will blink at. We'll just call it delay time MS. and assign the value 1000 to it. Only this time, we'll need an integer because bytes can only go up to 255. And notice that we added the letters MS on the end. Again, this gives it a descriptive name because the delay function takes milliseconds. Now, let's talk about scope. The two variables we just declared are called global variables. 